Hi everyone. Uh, good morning. It's Rita from Miss Rita to the Rescue here for Cricket Chat. Today's Cricket Chat. Um, and I hope that I can get some folks on. I I didn't know what time it actually was, so I'm looking at my clock, but it might be a minute or two off. But I hope I can I can uh, get some people together to do a, it's a, actually a non-cricket machine uh, project that I came up with um, when I was researching doing these beautiful crocus flowers out of crepe paper. These were cut on the Cricut Maker. And so I was doing, thinking of doing this, and um, this idea came up. This is a giant cray paper peony or peony, however you want to call it. Um, I have always called them peonies, but I hear Martha calls them peonies, so maybe it's that. I don't know. But um, I made this. It's really fun. Um, and I want to show you how it goes together. It's pretty quick. And, um, actually it has on the back a charger plate, which you don't have to use, but I had a bunch left over from something at Christmas. So I use that. You can also use paper plates, but, um, best to get the paper plate that's real sturdy, like Chinette brand, um, that's really sturdy because we want to be able to hang these up. These would make wonderful backdrops for um, maybe a wedding or some sort of, uh, you know, event or just to liven up your home. I, um, I hung this in my kitchen for a few days and I really liked it and I thought that, you know, um, this would be a fun thing for you guys to learn, even though it wasn't really um, a cricket project. Hi, Susan. It was inspired by a cricket project, so I thought that that would be okay to do. Um, let's see. Today. What is today? Is it Wednesday? Oh, Wednesday already. So I wanted to tell you what we've got coming up for the week. Um, we are doing actually for, for Easter, I've got a number of projects. I even have a Passover project in there. Um, we've got some long cut Easter signs, um, an Easter explosion box on Friday for 3D Friday. Um, uh, we're going to be making carrot treat holders as well as jelly bean, um, jelly bean jar with vinyl on the side so that's kind of fun um we have some print and cut easter cards we're going to be making perfect stickers using the new offset feature um and of course we're going to be going back to the crepe paper and doing crepe paper flowers so there is um there's that i have a number of other things that i haven't told you about that I'm going to try to squish in there. So good morning. So I started working with this crepe paper and this is actually a crepe paper crocus that is from Leah Griffith. It's not perfect but um, it's a good first shot I think and so I was working with crepe paper and I was also cleaning my um, my attic because I have a lot of stuff it's not really attic it's like an upstairs room and and um, I have a lot of stuff up there that I put up there that I wanted to bring down and sort of consolidate with my vault <laughs> and so um so I I went up there and I found a big box of cray paper um and they were these rolls of cray paper and I see that I got them from Paper Mart and I was like, huh, this is interesting. So I watched a video from Leah Griffith and um, 
because she's the one who taught, and I don't have the book with me, but she has a crepe paper flower book, and she she sells this kind of crepe paper, extra fine and heavy crepe paper, and it's a lot different. This crepe paper is a lot different. I've learned a lot about crepe paper this morning or this week, and I want to just kind of show you what we're doing. So for these types of crepe paper, which is just beautiful stuff, it almost feels like fabric, um, we're not going to use this in this quantity. First of all, I don't think you get enough to make in this quantity, um, but uh, but it's also, it's too fine of a product to work in such a large scale. We will use some of the uh, yellow for the inside of the flower, but we're not going to use it for the actual flower. Instead, I'm using, uh, I'm going to be using some of this. This is a big roll of crepe paper. Now, I got this at Paper Mart, but somebody sent me a link from Michael's, and I'm sure they also have, yeah, they do have it at um, Amazon where you can get actually shades of a color, like shades of blue and shades of pink and, you know, that sort of thing. And I will put a link to those things at Michael's and at um, Amazon. And then also drop the Paper, paper Mart rolls. At Paper Mart, and I did actually place an order for more because, heaven forbid, I run out of something. <laughs> um, so I, these are about $2.50. It kind of depends. These are the two different kinds. This is more of a fine. So you'll see that the roll is actually smaller, but it's, it, the, as far as the width, it's 19 inches by 8 feet long. So we can use either this one or this one and we'll, the result will be the same. To make this giant flower, you do need this much. One flower is one roll. Okay. Um, I tried to squeeze two in there. It didn't work. And so um, there's, you know, there's that. But for $2.50 plus the cost of the charger, um, you can have a beautiful I think this is just gorgeous for like less than five bucks if you're willing to hunt down the um, the the crepe paper. It's all put together by hand. I do use a glue gun, which I'm not too fond of. You will also need a pair of nice scissors um, and a charger or a paper plate to go in the back. This project is not a, um, as I mentioned again, this is not a uh, cricket project per se. It was inspired by Cricut. So I'm going to put this aside just so that I have some rim. So um, I'm going to start with, I'm going to use this roll and I've already actually cut out all my pieces. I'm just going to go down here a little bit and um, I just want to show you how I cut out these pieces. So um, this is sort of free form and you can sort of do whatever you want. But here is eight feet. Apparently eight feet is when you're buying this kind of crepe paper is a, a standard. Now this is what crepe paper is. It is actually like a stretchy paper. You see that? And the um, the more delicate and the, the greater the stretch, the better the crepe paper. This crepe paper, because we don't need a ton of stretch, is going to be fine. This is made, I guess, in China, um, and it has a nice stretch to it, but not nearly as nice as, say, something like this, the extra fine paper, which I'll show you, almost has, as I mentioned, like a fabric feel and it has a lot more stretch. So don't go using your very fancy crepe paper for this project, except maybe for the inside. Save that for when we do um, other flowers like this crocus that we've, that I kind of put together. Really cute, right? Okay, so what you need is a roll of this crepe paper, and then you're going to need something for the inside, uh, like maybe yellow or white. You're going to need a pair of scissors. You're going to need a glue gun, and you're going 
Um, you're going to need some sort of base. I use this charger, but you can use a thick, like a, a chinette type of, um, of, uh, of a base, like paper plate. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut up this paper and I'm going to make two size petals here just so you can see there's the the larger petals in the back and then there's um the inside petals okay so what i'm going to do is roll out this paper if i can get things out of my way and i am going to cut one sheet i'll just show you this one that we're going to cut all right and i'm cutting it it's about it's supposed to be about six to eight inches, okay? Um, and again, this can be all whatever you want. If you wanna change the measurements, you're welcome to, okay? So once I have a sheet like this and it's long, right? I'm going to fold it in half like this, all right? And I'm going to do this eight or nine times. So I can have eight or nine big petals. Then I need to make smaller petals. So I'm going to cut, I would cut it around five, maybe six inch petals. And you should get an entire big um, flower if you use these, these rough measurements, okay? So there's another one. This is for the internal flower. And we're folding it here. Make sure you're cutting it this is the grain, so you make sure you're cutting it this way, okay? So what we're going to do is then take all of our cuts. So I have here are my small ones, and here are my large ones. And so I'm going to take it and hold the fold at the bottom, okay? Fold is at the bottom, and I'm going to start where the fold is, and I'm going to start forming a petal, whatever way you want to make it. I did them just sort of rounded like this, forming this petal. And I have sometimes had to come back and, and make sure that it was thinner on the bottom than it was on the top. This will produce two petals. So if you have eight of these, you'll have 16 actual petals and it will really make the flower look very, um, very fluffy. Um, before you go and put them on, and then we do the same thing with the smaller piece. So, um, but we make the flower slightly less long and remember, it's shorter. So here is what I would do. And you can do whatever you like. You know, if you want to make a different uh, blunt end, it's up to you um, how you want to do it. But when you fold it like this, it's going to create, when we put it on, it's going to create two petals. Okay, two petals. So go ahead and cut your roll so that you have, as I said, you have the big ones, there's eight to 10 of those, and the smaller ones, also about eight of them. And what you're going to do with each of these is you're going to start stretching them out through the middle, kind of giving it a cup shape. That's what's great about crepe paper. It's got stretch. So we wanna just kind of do that a little bit, just to sort of stretch out each of the um, petals. Let's see, as I go through this, I'm stretching out the petals. And it's just gonna start to give a, a nice shape. We'll work a little bit more on this in um, in the next step or in one of the next steps. But I just to get started, I wanna stretch out the big ones and then we'll start putting things onto the base, okay? So I'm stretching all of these. How are y'all doing? I'm so excited about this project. Um, I, I envision my house covered in these. <laughs> When I get all of my my crepe paper in, this would be fun. I think it would make a really nice backdrop for like photos and stuff at a party. 
So anyway, okay, so I've got my, my, my eight or so big petals. I'm going to get my charger. Now, the thing I like about this charger, because it has this like sort of lip, which is where you're supposed to put your plate, right? But I'm going to put these all around here and create the flower. So it gives a really good lift to the back flowers anyway, to the back um, leaves. So before I do that, I have to um, sort of scrunch up the bottom here like this and I do that and hold it in place using the glue. So um, here you got to be careful because you can for sure burn your fingers with that glue. I'm using kind of a low temp glue. I think I'm not using my heavy duty industrial side <laughs> glue gun because I don't want all kinds of um, of burn. So I'm just sort of bunching up at the bottom just to kind of give it more of a petal shape. And I'm doing that with a little bit of glue on the bottom here and bunching like this. Just be careful of your fingers. Okay. So we'll go through all of that. Let's do that real quick. Let me just move you down a little bit. So here I am bunching all these big petals. We'll come to the smaller ones after. All right. This is a fun project for working with, in a group or with, you know, with some other kind of crafter because you can each be working on one or you can work on these together. It's not like this individual small craft that only one person can work on at a time. And you could very quickly have an entire wall full of flowers for an event. Um, and I just, I will tell you that I did get this uh, idea from a company that actually I think works with Lee Griffith. It's called Smile Mercantile. It's kind of cute name. Um, and they had a video on this. And they also had um, another idea for tissue paper, a tissue paper garland. Um, I thought that maybe tissue paper would work for this, but I don't know. So um, I'm waiting for my tissue paper to come in so that I can sort of see. All right, so just kind of crumpling up. No need to be super precise about this because um, it's just, it's going to look free form. We're going to play with the form afterwards, but we do want it to look sort of petal like, you see? And the last one right here. Okay, so. Now we have our base and we're going to take and put these all around and eight, as I said, eight to 10, there's just a little tiny bit of overlapping. You're going to want to put this sort of on the inside past this lip that will give your, um, your flower a little lift too, which is nice. That's why I probably would suggest say Chinette because it has a really, it's sturdy and it has a really nice lip to it. Let me get some more glue because I'm running out of glue here. Okay, so um, we're going to start by just choosing one spot. I chose 10 o'clock and I'm gonna go all around and I'm going to, um, lay them side by side. If you want, you can overlap them, but I think we can, um, we can achieve that fullness by sort of stretching out the, um, the crepe and not have to worry about overlap, not having overlap. All right. And so this is what I'm doing. I am just putting our petals, trying not to burn my fingers, which I always do. Um, and here we go. Now, I would suggest that you cut each flower from the same color because as you can see here, the colors vary slightly. Um, even if you buy from the same 
manufacturer, the colors can be slightly off. And that's okay to have that color variation from flower to flower, but maybe not so much from, um, from uh, like the same flower. Like you don't, I don't think you'd want this color. Maybe you would. I mean, you could certainly try it, but I kind of like that it's pretty homogenous, homogeneous. Um, and let's see, I'm kind of running out of, did I, oh yeah, no good, I have this one. Okay, so try to space them out. Again, you'll do better than me because you won't be chit-chatting and everything, um, but I try to space them all out. There we go. So that we have a fairly round flower. And the last one is here. Okay. So now what we're going to do before we start in on the smaller petal is we're going to um, take and separate these petals and start to give them a little bit of depth you know, and, and make it, and if you have to put a little more glue, that's fine too, but we're just kind of giving it more of that cupped feel to it, and you can play whatever you want to do here. You can um, give the edges sort of a wrinkly sort of look by just stretching like this. If you like that kind of look, you can do that. Um, but you're basically just separating the top one from the bottom one to give a fullness to your flower. And so what I tend to do is just sort of pull this and stretch and pull and stretch. You're going to do that a little bit. Um, and then if you have this up during the year and then you take it down for Christmas or whatever, you're going to have to play with it. That's the great thing about crepe paper. It lasts forever, but you still need to fluff it up. My mother was famous for fluffing flowers, so um, I, I never could do... I, I have some beautiful peonies, but, or peonies, but um, I, I, can't, I can't have a garden that's an, all annuals because I can't seem to grow them, only the perennials. So here we go. And we have... And I need a little bit of glue here. Whoops! Okay, need a little glue here. All right, so here we are. We're almost halfway done, believe it or not. Crepe paper is made of paper and glue. Someone's asking what crepe paper is made of. And actually, very interesting from Leah, I heard that crepe paper was huge in, um, in Europe and the world <laughs> um, at the turn of the century, 1900s, and, um, and then sort of petered off. But a lot of people did their own crepe paper flowers, and now nobody does. So there's only a few um, manufacturers left in the world beside China. There's one in Italy and there's one in Germany and there's one in uh, actually Massachusetts um, that was, I think it's, it used to be called Denicrape or no, it was called Denison and now it's called Denicrape and that was purchased by another company. So they are keeping this alive, um, but it's just simply not as um, not as fashionable to make your own flowers as it was before. Now, if you've never seen Leah Griffith, um, I would encourage you to go to her website. She has a fabulous website. Now, she does have a she has some things that are free for people, but she also has some. Um, has a like a membership program where you pay um, for SVGs and you can you can uh, get instructions and SVGs for all of her stuff. Um, and so here is the small ones, which we did the same thing for. We just kind of made a little cup to it, and now we're going to glue the bottom and sort of 
sort of uh, without trying, without getting to, where are my fingers? I have those finger things, those finger, of course I can't find them when, I, when I'm looking for them. So we're going to glue the bottom here to bunch it up a little bit, okay? This goes pretty fast once you have it all worked out. So, um, so I think if you had an event that you were trying to plan for and you wanted specific colors even, you could do take care to do that. They had, uh, I'd say, 20 or so different colors, not just pink, um, but pink's my favorite. And um, they had red, orange, yellow, blue, green, brown. They had all kinds of colors over at Paper Mart. And again, I will post the link um, to Amazon and Paper Mart so you can see uh, what I'm talking about. All right, almost done with these bunching of the bottom pieces, I think. Did I finish all? No, one more. Okay. Bunch, bunch, bunch. Oh, uh oh. Titty. Oh, we got a nice, it's sort of overcast here. But sunny, sun, it snowed in, in Canada. Oh my gosh. Oh, I hope we don't see any more snow here. Okay, so here's our, our big, you know, all of the big ones. And now we're going to lay the small ones. We're going to go in, make the circle smaller. And if you like, you can um, sort of overlap them with the ones behind. So try for that. All right. Put that in there and we'll fluff it more as time as we go on. So don't worry about that. We want the glue to stick in there. I think I need another glue stick. Well, the rain is better than the snow <laughs> in Minnesota, right? So um, I think that this is a very therapeutic kind of a, of a um, craft. Working with the crepe paper feels very therapeutic. Um, and it's really kind of fun how things... Oh, oh, their dog walker is here. So they're very excited. That's why they're excited. All right, so let's keep moving on. I've got one, two, three, four, five petals to do. So simple. And you don't have to worry about this being all great and even and everything because you're going to be covering it up with some of the, uh, what's it called, the stamen or the inside of the flower. I thought it might be nice if you had green to put a leaf or two behind it, too. That would be kind of fun. And remember, this is not the expensive crepe. This is the sort of the inexpensive Chinese crepe. It's not streamers. I suppose you might be able to find it at like a dollar store, but I'm not terribly sure about that. <coughs> Pardon me. <clears throat> I got to fit one more in here somewhere. <clears throat> Where should I put it? Let's put it here. So there is all of the leaves, okay? I just want the, the glue to set a little bit. So I'm going to put it aside for just a minute. And I'm going to get some... <clears throat> some uh, crepe. I'm going to use this Leah crepe for for the inside because um, I don't have any yellow of the other kind. And let's use this yellow. 
Um, and this is what Leah's crepe looks like. So it's obviously it's it's shorter here. Okay. Now for the inside, what we're going to do is cut off a little piece here. This seems fine to me, right around here. All right. And we are going to fold it like this and then fold it again and then fold it in half. I hope that that's going to produce what I'm looking for. So then we're going to create sort of like a petal, but more like kind of oblong-y kind of a look to the inside. And what you end up with, or you should end up with, but I didn't cut it right, here we go, <laughs> are these little pieces. They're supposed to be detached. I didn't cut it right, but... Here we go. One, two, three, all right, and four. All right, so we have that. Now we need the little fringy stuff. So I'm going to take also take another piece of this. And... I am going to cut it in strips going this way. This is against the grain and maybe uh, about two inches, maybe two and a half. All right, and then cut across here. All right. And we are going to, if it's up to you how you want to do it, um, we're going to just kind of fold it up and we're going to start making cuts about three quarters of the way through. Try to make it about a half an inch, maybe. Like that. I like to do it this way and then um, put it together as one great big piece afterwards. All right, two down, two to go. This one, not exactly my best work. <laughs> but we can put it on this side. And it looks very neat. Okay, and again, you guys will be way better at this than I am. I am just sort of rushing through to make the right to make, make this finish up in less than an hour. That's always been my goal. Um, so you might want to do more fluffing and more detailed cutting. But So we're going to take these pieces. We're going to glue them together to make one long piece. Why? Why? Okay. I'm making this long piece out of all these little short pieces, you see? Uh, okay. Oh, I do not like glue guns. The stuff I do for you folks, <laughs> just kidding. I would do it myself anyway if it didn't have you. Okay, so there is our big, long piece of streamer. You could also use those streamers. Um, and then what we're going to start doing is we're going to start rolling this like this. We're making the innermost part of the flower. I keep it all in a roll. Do your best, you know. It's not rocket science. <laughs> That's what my family always would say. It's not rocket science. 
Okay, so I put a little bit of glue on the end of that to sort of hold that together. And also, um, once that glue holds, we can just sort of like fan this out a little bit to give it that sort of fun, um, sort of fluffy inside of, of the peony, okay? So there we go. Fluff it out a little bit, all right? Now these pieces here, we're going to just stretch them out. That's going to be sort of the, the space between um, the small the the leaves and this little fluff ball thing okay you sort of the same technique as what we did before this one looks a little shabby I think I might trim it up a little okay all right so now we're going to bring our flower back, our com almost completed flower, and we are going to put in the middle pieces, and there's only four of them, um, but there's a very small space there, so you don't really need a whole lot. Still want to keep a little open hole there for our, for our stamen on the inside. One, two, I'll put them in like a clock, 12, three, six, nine. All right. And remember, we're gonna come back and fluff. Fluffing is the most important part of this project. So if you like to fuss and fluff, this is a good project for you. Okay, we're gonna put a ton of glue on the bottom here. Um, just to hold it in place. And we're going to stick it here and sort of hold it until it sets. All right. You might need more glue. This is the, uh, you know, and I use the, the hot glue. You know I don't really like hot glue, but this definitely works best with the hot glue. So... Let me back up a little bit so you can see. Now all that is left is um, to do a hanger in the back and to fluff. So fluffing is very, I think, a lot of fun. It's kind of soothing. You're just going to take a pedal. Don't pull it too hard, but it's got a lot of stretch. See that? And you can just sort of fluff. We already did a little fluffing, but this is going to really give it a lot of Oomph, a fullness to our flower that we want and that is the beauty of cray paper isn't it look at how fluffy this is becoming and this is great you know every time you walk past it which is what this is what I would do I would fluff a petal or two because, you know, you want to keep it fluffy and gravity, you know, takes it apart. But um, you can see how these are not delicate little things. These are definitely uh, projects that you can play with and sort of, you know, and if you have one that sort of feels like it's coming off, like right here, I can just put a little tiny bit more glue in there just to kind of hold it in place. And you see how I'm pulling it because the grain is going this way. So I'm pulling it this way to sort of give it um, a little thickness. And I'm doing the front middle, the middle petals there and then the back ones. And just make sure if you're fluffing, you want to make sure you can't see the whatever you're using for the base. So that's what I'm trying to get at with the fluffing of the outside petals. I think, I, I had this idea yesterday that I think um, 
this would look good if we made poinsettias in the at Christmas time and have them sort of poinsettia ones. I'm gonna have to work on that with like a red crepe or even pink. Poinsettias come in pink, white, cream like. Still working at a rigo and around. This is fun. It's supposed to be fun. <laughs> I find it fun. Um, yeah. Oh, hey, I got something to tell you. Remember we were doing the sublimation um, mugs and we I didn't put any paper on there. Um, I did speak to, and we started talking about butcher paper and, you know, what is butcher paper and all of that. And someone um, mentioned that Jen... Jennifer Maker uses copy paper and so I confirmed that with her and she said yes you can use copy paper um, she said she puts like two slices of copy paper I don't know if you need two it she did two or three sometimes she said but um, it does work I guess the idea of the butcher paper is um, to keep the the um, the press <clears throat> clean from ink but also to absorb moisture because there's just natural moisture in the air and that would interfere with your ink so that's why they use the butcher paper and if you cannot find it and I actually I found it but I'm sure it's not everywhere um use copy paper if you can't well I ripped it that's okay I ripped it that's okay, Rita. You're fine. So be careful you don't rip like that. I might have to hide it a little bit like this. That's fine. I'm going to put it in the back. All right. Sort of done here. I could play all day with this. But you get the idea, right? Is that you're just stretching, trying not to rip, stretching, and giving it sort of a cup shape. All right. All right. And there you go. Um, that is our oversized paper peony crepe paper peony i can move around and do this now to hang it up um i just flipped it on the back put some um some twine which i do not have here but i put a little bit of twine and glued it in place to create a loop and that is it now wouldn't it look fun with like 10 or 20 or um, and it does, you know, this, this sort of thing. I, I literally have just been playing with this and once I get it done, <clears throat> okay. So that is how to work with crepe paper on a large scale. Okay. Um, and we are going to be doing this on a smaller scale with the machines, but I, I really want you to sort of understand the, um, the feel of it. It's very stretchy and it does depend on the kind you get, but it is a very stretchy material and just to get real close, you can see that the stretch comes from the way that the paper is ruched together. And um, it can create some pretty realistic looking blooms like this one. So until you kind of understand what crepe paper does, um, you, can't, you can't really uh, achieve a really realistic looking bloom. So um, the other thing that you might try, I haven't tried because I don't have enough of it, is tissue paper. This is tissue paper. <clears throat> if you guys want to see how I did this, then um, I'm happy to show you. But this is a tissue paper um, made garland that I made for Easter. And um, it's simply tissue paper that's hand cut just like this is, and put onto a string so it gives it quite a bit of strength and can be used 
It never needs watering, that's right. So it can be used year after year, and you can change it up for Christmas or Halloween or whatever. All right, so you want to see how to make the garland? Okay, so we can um, schedule that as well. But this is tissue paper. This is crepe paper. For me, when I was first looking at this, I was thinking, isn't crepe paper tissue paper? I was getting confused. But no, indeed, they're two different things, and um, they do different um, different. They behave differently when you're doing different projects. So I hope that you'll try this. Um, again, I will put the links that I know of for the crepe paper. I don't know if they'd have it at the Dollar Tree. I know they have like tissue paper at the Dollar Tree. Um, and you can get a bunch of different colors like in the in the birthday aisle. And that's all I did here. I used three colors. There's like a lavender, a blue, and a pink. And I cut it in a special way, and then I just glued it to a bit of, where's the end? Here, a little bit of, uh, like, I think this is hemp cord or something. So um, so definitely I will show you guys how to do that. And that's it, folks. That's how you make these beautiful oversized flowers. And they'll last for years and years. You can put them up every spring. And then when you go to put them back up the next spring, just fluff, fluff, fluff. Um, and you will get a beautiful 3D flower and that does not need watering, that looks beautiful. Um, and it's just, it's just a fun, this is fun. This, I think, is fun. So, anyway, thank you all for coming today. We'll see you again tomorrow. Tomorrow, we're making wonderful stickers with the offset feature, okay? So, we're going to be using offset, which you all should have by now. Um, and we're going to talk about offset, and we're going to make some beautiful print and cut stickers. It's not the only thing you can use offset for, but it is um, it is one of the great features. We're going to make stickers. Stickers are all the rage. Everybody likes stickers. And so we're going to show how to do that. Thank you, everybody, for coming today. I really appreciate you. Um, and I hope to see you again soon. Take care. You're welcome.